Okay, well, pleasure to be here. Um, I'm the uh, president and CEO of uh, Brilliant Light Power, and uh, we're, we're located in uh, Cranberry, New Jersey, just east of Princeton. And uh, we're working on a uh, new primary energy source. It's zero pollution, low cost primary energy source. It can be, uh, it's applicable to essentially all power applications. And uh, by low cost, I mean 200 times lower cost. You can replace uh, coal, oil, gas, nuclear, solar, wind, LNG, bio, hydro, every imaginable form of power. And it's, um, it's a totally novel new way of making energy. It came about while I was uh, working on free electron lasers at MIT, and um, I solved some fundamental physics dealing with uh, why uh, accelerating electrons uh, radiate. And then conversely, how you could, um, why the electron's stable and non radiating in a hydrogen atom. <clears throat> so there's a theoretically predicted reaction where atomic hydrogen reacts with an energy acceptor and it transitions, uh, the electron transitions to a lower, more chemically energy uh, stable state. It uh, releases about 200 times the energy of burning. So the, the subsequent atoms form molecules and uh, these molecules we've trapped in inorganic crystals. And uh, also we've uh, cryogenically trapped them uh, by uh, liquefying it and ran uh, over 23 spectroscopic analyses that uh, dispositively proved that there's a new chemical state of hydrogen. So there's a, um, then we invented a, a, um, a sun cell. It's a um, plasma-based technology that injects, um, has two molten metal injectors, electromagnetic pumps that uh, uh, create two intersecting streams of molten tin. And um, we run a high current through that, low voltage, and it produces a uh, tremendously powerful plasma releasing uh, 200 times the energy of burning the hydrogen. So we have that uh, operational at uh, hundreds of thousands of watts, and um, it has a tremendous commercial uh, applicability. So we had that validated by leading experts, and um, one of the one of the uh, the uh, impediments of that uh, technology is we were working with boilers, and uh, as you know, boilers uh, requiring steam and steam turbine ranking cycle, uh, and then in, in our case, we were looking to develop a molten metal um, molten metal uh, heat exchanger to air or water. And uh, it doesn't exist. Now, there's a lot of talk about using fusion technology. That doesn't exist in molten metal heat exchanger working with those, uh, those media. So we actually developed a kind of chimera of a carbon and stainless based one, but it's, uh, it's, it's challenging, uh, the steam technology and then running enormously high temperatures to get high tra heat transfer rates into air to run a gas turbine. So um, over the last year or two, we've uh, had a dramatic breakthrough in terms of a, um, uh, an optical power system. So this is the ideal way to do it. Uh, this is um, making an uh, enormous amount of power uh, and it can be converted directly into electricity using concentrator photovoltaics. These are uh, photovoltaics that run about a thousand uh, times sun concentration. So it's about a megawatt per square meter, which is massive power, power density. And, uh, and we have that, as you can see here, operational. The, uh, the sun cell shown at the bottom shows the uh, two molten metal injectors. It's got electrical isolation. It's got alignment system. It's got some very interesting uh, materials in terms of uh, the, um, the compatibility of expansion and, and compatibility with the injection of metal and, and these enormously high temperatures. And the seal was one of the, one of the big challenges, how to seal the technology and have a, a quartz transparent dome to allow these enormous power densities be transferred out of the cell. So uh, the cell is capable of more than 5 million watts per liter. It's uh, the highest power density of anything known. And, um, and it's tremendously inexpensive. I said 200 times cheaper. It's a, um, it's a enormously uh, huge market. It essentially covers all the addressable power market, electric stationary, motive, thermal, uh, $16.3 trillion market by 200 times cheaper. Um, that translates from the, from the basis of $15 a kilowatt capital cost. And uh, we have the breakdown of the cost of goods from the bill of materials on our, on our webpage. And, um, and that's a really realistic number. The, um, 
There's no fuel. There's no fuel or grids infrastructure required, no fuel cost corresponding to that. Um, and that translates into less than, that's actually a conservative number, 0.1 cent per kilowatt hour for on-site electrical power, no tr uh, transmission distribution or demand charges. So with this device, it's possible to electrify everything using uh, existing equipment, warrantied systems made by OEMs, uh, mass manufactured, proven technology, uh, extraordinarily safe and uh, reliable. So uh, we're set out to uh, do demonstrations now. So this is showing the plasma. We're injecting molten gallium here against a half kilogram tungsten electrode. And uh, you can see it's kind of a purple plasma. And then at the bottom, there's so much power coming off that it's heating its surroundings. There's a ceramic shroud above this. This is uh, 10 feet away. And there is so much light, it uh, melted through quartz, just the transmission of light through quartz melted it, 1650 degrees centigrade and uh, fried the camera. It's, uh, so it's very, very uh, bright. So uh, we spent about $120 million. It's a very uh, intensive effort. We did thousands of uh, solid fuels, uh, electrochemical devices. We even did like gyrotron direct rectification and electric electricity plasma, the microwave electricity, all types of very, very uh, creative and, and pretty amazing technologies, but they just weren't greater to, than fire until now. And this, this technology is absolutely unsurpassed in every category. As you can see here, every category, it's uh, 24-7, 365, uh, extraordinarily compact. It's about 150 times at least power to weight ratio than even internal combustion. So uh, it's got phenomenal um, applications across the board. So the uh, reaction involves uh, energy transfer from a hydrogen atom to uh, an energy acceptor. It's a back exact energy, the potential energy of uh, ordinary hydrogen. So you can think of a photon um, decrease in the electric field and allowing the electron to go excited state. This is actually the inverse of that where there's a radiationless energy transfer and the electron becomes bound tighter and goes to a, a lower chemical state. It's a two-step process. And the second step, it emits, emits uh, extreme ultraviolet continuum radiation. And that radiation is seen all over the universe at 10.1 nanometer, cut off uh, at five times more intensity than all the emitters combined. Uh, it's called the ultraviolet crisis. Moreover, uh, uh, this new form of hydrogen has been identified by rotational spectra, vibrational spectra, its total energy um, it has a higher mobility than anything known in gas chromatography. And interestingly, um, it ties into a lot of astrophysics. The rotational energy levels match the diffuse interstellar bands. These are 500 spectral absorption lines seen throughout the universe that have uh, defied uh, identification for 50 years and billions spent on it. They're matched identically. And we've seen uh, in the Raman spectrum, we've actually made uh, shown spectra that match those lines and Raman, FTRR, uh, electron beam emission spectroscopy and other techniques. So this is one validation we did with a leading expert uh, working for Patel. Uh, we had Dr. C at, uh, at Rutgers University. Um, he's a combustion expert. And uh, Randy Booker, uh, he's chairman of the Department of Physics at uh, UNC Asheville. They're getting about two to 300,000 watts of extra power by measuring how much weight loss there was in steam. So saying there's uh, Steam technology is more difficult than uh, optical. And the other um, caveat with optical is there's massive amount of, uh, uh, of benefit in, in transferring the heat optically uh, versus uh, thermally. And uh, by heat, I mean black body radiation, like 5,600 degrees Kelvin, which is 55.6 million watts per square meter. Uh, you can't get those kind of heat transfer rates with conduction, convection. Huge energy density. Um, as, as strange as it sounds, uh, you can take a liter of water will take a Tesla 2,200 miles with its process. So a liter of water is actually uh, equivalent to um, a liter of hydrogen at 200 atmospheres. So either one, you buy tank hydrogen or a liter of water. If you it take water and electrolyze it to the same amount of hydrogen, then uh, it's hydrogen equivalent. That's 0.5% uh, percent parasitic load. And uh, so you can see this has got it enormous potential for range and, uh, and logistics. It's uh, enormous energy density. It can be up to a thousand times more energy per weight than uh, competing energy sources and fuels. So it has no moving parts. The electromagnetic pumps are 
60 years maintenance free, uh, been used for nuclear in industry for cooling other things. Uh, the PV's warranty 20 years. It works in a controlled environment, so should uh, shouldn't have any uh, environmental degradation. There's no grid connection, so there's no FERC regulation. You could do the grid as a backup as you do learn out. And uh, so you can see there's a tremendous amount of um, advantages of this. So you can uh, use, uh, use it for an AC, um, say it's, D, it's a DC uh, power, but it's the same as PV because it's PV conversion. So you can use the same as a, as a photovoltaic uh, inverter and uh, run AC. So you could do stationary electric thermal and motive. So as I was saying, uh, the, the temperature of this is very, very high. So if you run at a higher pressure, you get black body radiation versus continuum uh, extreme ultraviolet radiation. And temperature we've achieved is up to uh, 5,600 uh, Kelvin, which is the same as the surface of the sun. Uh, at that point, you're transferring 55.6 uh, megawatts per square meter. Even at 3,000 Kelvin, it's uh, 4.6 million watts per square meter. So you get tremendous uh, power um, transfer with this, uh, this approach. The other thing is very unique is you can do light recycling. You see in the bottom frame. <clears throat> so this has actually been proven. It's something I worked on uh, very early on. And uh, you ba basically take the light that's below the band gap and bounce it back to the uh, black body emitter and it'll reabsorb it and re-emit it to black body temperature. And um, projections are you can get 85% conversion efficiency uh, under that scenario. Uh, it's been achieved uh, 35 at 1200 cal uh, centigrade uh, by Caltech and Cal Berkeley using a single junk and in gas cell. But that's a very low black body temperature compared to ours. And, uh, and they project they could get 50% conversion efficiency with a single junction using light recycling. This is the first time there's been a uh, enabling technology in terms of the light source for this type of approach. Uh, they used actually a graphite furnace. In this case, we use our uh, sun cell black body radiator. <clears throat> so it can be used for industrial, commercial, residential. We would go after the big uh, kilowatt hour applications initially. And then of course there's uh, in thermal, uh, you, baseboard heating is like a dollar a square foot. You do air heating, electric boilers, heat pumps, uh, arc furnaces. All this technology already exists, so it's all plug and play. <clears throat> then on the motive side, you could do EV uh, charging as a transition, trucks, uh, ships, trains, you know, big applications, use a lot of kilowatt hours. And uh, we plan to lease uh, power systems. And then in the automotive, it's kind of a special case uh, there's about 100 million cars made a year. We're looking to potentially sell into that market. <clears throat> so we got massive patents worldwide. Uh, we're actually at number three to four in the world for hydrogen patents. And uh, I think just behind around General Motors in China, uh, for example, um, kind of interchange. But we're the only ones I'm aware of that has patents on this technology. So uh, this is kind of comparisons. Um, there's uh, all, all these components are off the shelf. There's no uh, supply chain issues. It's all recyclable. It's incredibly safe. It's running at uh, about 1% atmospheric pressure. And you can see uh, cost comparison um, wise, uh, it's extraordinarily right there, uh, inexpensive. So uh, our plan now is uh, we're doing spectral power measurements. We got uh, two uh, concentrator portable take manufacturers we're supplying data to. And we're uh, working with a couple of companies. They do uh, outsourcing of the uh, user interface, <clears throat> the uh, software controls, uh, actuators, and things like that for commercial packaging. And then doing uh, corporate assessment, letting corporations assess the technology in our lab. And then we'll put pilots into their lab and then um, have a uh, uh, go into field trials about mid uh, 24. So we hope to have some pilots by uh, Q3 or four uh, of this year. So uh, that's about it. I mean, there's enormous amount of data on our webpage. This was done at Delphi University. There's uh, all these spectral lines. There's on the top is the uh, actual data on the top right-hand corner. And this is actually what I predicted theoretically. This is an exact equation. That's, that's the difference with the way I approach this solution from free electron lasers. It actually solves structure of the electron. It's not a singularity. It actually has structure. And uh, from that, you can solve pretty much everything. Lamb shift, fine structure, hyperfine structure, G factor, multi-electron atoms, molecules, et cetera, exact equations. All these uh, analytical signatures are predicted, predicted exactly. And we've uh, identified uh, 
rotation, vibration, total energy, essentially all the major characteristics of this molecule. We have it, we have it in our lab. So if there's interest in uh, replicating it, uh, we, we're looking for uh, collaborators and uh, companies to partner up with to, uh, to uh, bring this technology to market. So the, uh, the strategy is to um, outsource manufacturing, the major manufacturers, and then uh, at least capital equipment. We have major EPC firms want to do the installation, uh, maintenance, and, and the like. Uh, any questions? Yes. With such concentrated power uh, that we need to run for long periods of time, um, are the materials out there that can tolerate it or actually making uh, the equipment smaller? Uh, actually, you know, there's always a. Well, we, let me give you the, give you the, the extreme. So uh, we've taken uh, independent sh uh, in individual shots. So uh, there's hydrogen atoms we have to create in the reaction and then there's an energy acceptor that we call that a catalyst because it's not used in the reaction. It just accepts the energy from the atomic hydrogen allowing it to go to this new state. So um, the, um, the, well, we've, we, we, the, the most power we've gotten is 20 megawatts from a 10 microliter shot. So if you put the combination together and, and you push it, you can get those kind of power density. That's like terawatts per liter. That's like nuclear power uh, blast uh, power densities. So we've gotten this up to about five, between five and 10 megawatts per liter. If you do optical transfer, you can, you can, you can withstand those kind of power transfer rates because the, uh, we're using quartz and quartz is uh, essentially 100% uh, transparent. It's like at the reflection limit for 200 nanometer up to about two microns. So, uh, so the light goes through. So the, uh, it doesn't, there's, there's very low absorption. So we used to have problems with the, uh, the base, you know, all this infrastructure in the bottom here uh, used to uh, melt uh, very, very quickly. And uh, that was the whole point of this, this program is to get that power out. And uh, the most efficient way to do that is optically. So we haven't had any problems with that. We really haven't. It's just a question, how high a power can you run it before you uh, melt, uh, melt the quartz? It has a melting point of 1,650, and it's uh, essentially 100% transmi transmission. So you can get a lot of power out of it. Hi, Peter, you're from IPUI. On your first line, you talked about going below the ground state of uh, individual hydrogen atoms. Sounds like reverse of neutron decay. You create neutrons in the process. Uh, no, I did. I did the full relativistic equation. Actually, it's the same as Dirac equation, but I didn't invent any spinner tensors or any kind of exotic math and treat the electron as a singularity and postulate things. It, you can actually solve, uh, like I was saying, lamp shift, fine structure, high fine structure, G fact, full relativistic one electron atom equation. If you calculate the, these lower energy states. And let me, let me explain. So there's uh, excited electronic states, so not from, for people not familiar, 13.6 rn squared. Then there's other states, 13.6, one over p, the quantity squared. p can go down to 137. So if you put the full relativistic treatment, you can get an atom about eight times the radius of the, uh, of the, Make sure you use the microphone, sir, because the people in Zoom can't hear you. Okay, about eight times the radius of, of the, uh, the nucleus. So it's, uh, it's about 13 times smaller than muonic hydrogen atom or, or even less. So you can go down to very, very uh, small atomic structures. That's very, very improbable though. So uh, you, you could, uh, if you run heavy isotopes, you could potentially make um, tritium. It's possible. Very, very trace amount. We're running ordinary hydrogen. It's not, it's not in our interest to, to, uh, to make tritium or any... any uh, you know, anything to do with nuclear. So this has nothing to do with nuclear. It's a chemical reaction. So you get massive, massive energy. But if you wanted under very, very long confinement and very, very high power densities to try and push it to these lower and lower states, to do something like that, you probably could experimentally do that. Thank you.